Hey there, boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today, we're gonna swap the radiator on and Rex, my 66 Chevy, half ton, small block, five speed. Ah, uh, the radiator, the old copper one is pretty crusty, so I bought the old eBay special, aluminum one, about 130 bucks. Duff is excited to get this going because this is a pickup he gets to ride in the most. So the first thing I did was take the old plastic petcock that comes with these things it's garbage and threaded the original one in there because it's a nice combination of steel and brass and then I found this the clamp even without even with half the rubber removed the rubber isolator it won't go down far enough to bolt down so I'm gonna have to I think both widen these straps and then lengthen this so that it'll come down to the core support so I think the first thing I'm gonna do is drill out these spot welds right here looks like there's four of those take those loose set this off of the side and then probably widen these out a little bit so that that fits real nice and then we'll have to lengthen that as well so follow along Duff already gave up on me here we go so after I Found a drill bit that wasn't dull. By the way, these Norseman bits, they are nice. Had this set for, I don't know, four years now. So they're getting used up, but they've been good bits. Got all those drilled out. That side's loose. we go just that easy do a little cleaning up on that those are actually pretty good but we'll probably clean them up some more and we'll go set these on the pickup so much we got to widen them out so you can see how they fit on there there's a little bit of room but once we get these rubbers slid in place they're pretty thick I could have used thinner rubbers but even then, it's really tight at the top corners here. I think part of that is because the original copper radiator has a pretty good radius to these edges where this aftermarket fabricated radiator. Using my trusty Mitotoyo Yama Gamahachi Gazira caliper here. Looks like it's 2.54 inches wide on the stock GM radiator and this guy is two point seven five almost two point seven six so looks like we gotta go about a quarter inch wider Cut them apart. To widen these things out, I think I'm gonna run them through the old trusty Powermatic 140 vertical bandsaw. I don't know if you're supposed to wear gloves when you do this, but I do. We're gonna adjust the guide down there a little bit. Cut them off. So we got our brackets cut at the rubber slid in place. Still got all my digits. Um, one thing to note is you might want to mark which side, front, back on these so you don't get them mixed up. But I cut them right in the middle. If I had an extra one of these clamps, that would be ideal because then I could not have to add material in here. I could just cut one long or cut them both long and then get them cut to length and weld them together. But you can see there's that quarter inch that we need. So now we'll go find some filler material. Weld them all up. So I got the two set together there, and after pondering my life decisions, I got the rubber slid back in there. That one's kind of sliding out. We'll push that back in place. But I think what we're gonna do is just set that clamp up there, put her up to the brackets. I think we're just gonna burn her in with the old Miller 140 and give her a light zap just to hold everything in place. 
Try not to get her too hot and burn that rubber out of there. Then we'll pull it off. Try to get as much weld as we can just to hold everything in place. All good. I look for some material and that's going to be tough to cut a little strip like that and not burn it all apart. Really don't want to do any TIG welding on this thing because it's not really worth it. So, wish me luck. One more quick note. Instead of burning that rubber, I don't know if you can see it, but kind of slid this in place, took the old Milwaukee Marksall black marker, marked where all my holes are at. We'll go weld her up on the bench because I think welding with that rubber might get a little intense. Dad joke of the day. You know why everybody loves camping? Because it's intense! <laughs> we got our uh, perma-temporary tax in place. Looking back, I wish I would have cut the front side longer so there was a little more material to weld on. Because the back, you can weld to the back side here. But, should be good enough for what we going on, got going on here. So, a little grinding, clean that up. Foo foo can it, if you're into that originality and whatnot. Slam her back in place. There's those rubbers I was talking about. Oh yeah, we gotta extend that yet. Son of a biscuit, I wish I hadn't welded that. Stay tuned. So we got our bracket set in place. Everything looks pretty good. Like I said, I wish I would have left this front side a little bit longer so that this gap was hidden and then I could have done some more welding and maybe not had to weld up there. But anyway, you can see I got, oh, probably a half inch gap down there. These holes up front are slotted. So I think we could get those to line up. So we can either make a spacer or drop this down. I'm gonna see if I got some quarter inch plate and then we'll just drill it for that bolt pattern because we got a nice pattern and that won't look so bad because I think by the time I cut this off and drop it down, things are gonna get pretty ugly. Again, this is where it'd be nice to have two of these and you could cut them apart, leave one, leave them both long, cut them to length, weld them together. Then you just gotta splice the height instead of two splices, so. What we got going here, this will work just fine. You probably could just put two bolts in here and it would be fine for mostly intense end purposes. All right, let's find some plate. Well, we got everything in place. Found a couple of spacers to stick in there. Got a radiator hose hooked up, clamps tightened up. Factory fan shroud back in place. Fiberglass, only one small repair. You don't see those anymore. Ah, uh, even put a new overflow hose on it. That's right. Even the nice thin vacuum hose. Not don't put a big 5 16 fuel hose like that. They just look silly on there. And usually there's not enough clearance in there. You know, get yourself some 5 16 vacuum hose. And then I think I'm just gonna go ahead and peel this Batland radiator cap hose off because I can't read what that says. And then throw a battery in her. We'll test on her a little bit. See if we can't put her in the rhubarb. Well, I guess it's been a while. Now it's good to go. But we're finally gonna put old Rex to the test here. It's a nice moderate 72 degrees here today. So Duff and I are gonna go test on the old Rex here. She's nice and cool now. Half tank of fuel. What do you say, Duff? Should we hit her? Let's do this. Look at this, how many people got four speeds that go? One, two, three, four, five. Race. It's got that tricky knob, just so you don't know, and two shifter holes. We'll talk about that on another episode. Race car stuff. Single exhaust straight pipe life, that's it. She works pretty good, don't she, Duff? Second 
gear, nice cruising speed. Temp gauge is still down there. Should have done this on one of our 98 degree days, but it was so gosh darn windy. Fill up all the tires. Look how the sound quality is. Probably terrible. Let's get rid of the old boogity boogity. Stinky dog. Oh, gross. Be done. Glad we don't have a nice seat in here. Anyway, all done with our run. Temp is cool as a cucumber still. Ripped on her a bit. She's good to go. So yeah, I think it was success. eBay radiator for the win. Thanks for watching, I appreciate it everybody. Hopefully this helped somebody out. Uh, I definitely think that was a pretty good $150 investment there. Thanks for watching, I appreciate it. Click like, share, subscribe, tell your friends. Got a comment down below, like, whatever you gotta do. Remember, doesn't matter how you get it done, as long as you're having fun.